Well, what's going on, you two? Well, today, it's me, Busy B. Got a little video sequence for you. As you can see, the old Peterbilt. Got a lot going on with the Peterbilt. We did one or two videos on the channel. And, uh,. I'm about to show you what's underneath the hood. We got something new going on. So let's go ahead and pop her open. We got something new going on underneath the hood. Let me get this hood pulled open and I'll show you. Mmm. Keep life. That's right. Alright, y'all ready? Here's what we got going on underneath the hood of the Pete. Look how pretty that thing looks. Hey. She's all painted up. Looking good, right? Gotta do a little more painting here and there, you know. Um, I'm gonna get some cat yellow. Do some touching up here and there, you know. Just a few odd ends, you know. As you can see, it's pretty nicely cleaned up, even the old pan's yellow, and uh, got a few new hoses on there. Yeah, let's go on the other side. Let's show you the other side, man. Brand new, brand new turbo system in this thing. Not only that, freshly rebuilt engine, got no more than 2,000 miles on it right now, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, it's, got a, it's got the platinum package for a Caterpillar. And what I wound up doing was I had a head gasket that was cracked on this truck. And it was cracked in between here guy showed me it was cracked in between here and uh, it needed uh, repaired and I'm like well we already got it halfway apart so I said to myself let's just go ahead and rebuild it that way I got security and I know this motor is gonna be fine for the next million miles cuz I'm the ones taking care of it, not somebody before me you know and that's how I looked at it so if you want to know what a platinum package is, this is what you get when you do a platinum package. Your motor gets repainted, your valve covers get repainted. I mean, that's it, the dealer does it. You get a new turbo. If you go with the new turbo on this system, and then you get, I believe, a new water pump um, and everything. Uh, but you got to request for the new belts if you want new belts on there. Um, I'm going to go over here show you what else they've done. Um, and you asked for the new compressor. Okay. Um, my old one was still good, but I was like, I'm going to pay for it. all new stuff. Everything's going to be pretty much brand new when I'm all said and done. Now, your wiring's not included. I am going to replace the wiring harness on this tractor. As you can see, she's getting kind of rough looking, you know. And it's got 19 years of use. I mean, it's time to start replacing some wiring and a few other things that I found along the way. But, all in all, the Pete is, you're doing good. Doing real good. I'm happy with it. Um, I've, I've got to fix the fan housing on it right now. Um, when they rebuilt the motor, they went through and figured, tried to diagnose why the fan was sticking. And it's staying on all the time. So um, they've seen if it's an AC switch. They've seen if it was something else with the fan and all that. And they narrow it down to is that the fan is stuck because the clutch is bad on it. So I'd rather be stuck than not work at all. You get what I'm saying? So that's going to get fixed later this week. Um, I had to get some money under my belt. Um, you know, you, you spend, I spent 25K on this engine. And some of you is watching this video that's a lot of money yes it is a very lump sum that took everything I had and it, 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 it it's gonna cover me for four years that's how I looked at it so with this engine I got a four-year unlimited mileage warranty 
and if I throw a rod or anything in this engine, uh, and, and if I blow, blow it up to where the rod goes through the block, I get a new block. If something goes through the head, I get a new head. Pretty much, if it's in the motor, when they put it in the motor, and they had to rebuild it, I get a brand new engine, which is a very, very good deal. And I didn't go through Peter build at all. I went through Cat. Um, there's very few Caterpillar dealers that actually rebuild engines. Uh, luckily, I found one, and uh, they do it. Did a really good job. They're out of Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, check them out online if you want. Um, but just a shout out to them. They have done a really good job. The guy that did it. He's been doing it for 40 plus years. I'm, I'm really impressed on how well the job he's done. And uh, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll fire it up. You know, I, I got the the seven inch stacks. You know. And uh, I've heard, I've had a, and, and I'm going to point this out to some of you guys that's watching the channel, is that I had a guy a while back complain about how my camera was and all this. I'm not a professional photographer, you know, photographer, and I use what I got. I got a cell phone is what I use. So, if you don't like my video content, I'm sorry. You don't have to watch it, okay? And that's how I feel about it, you know, uh, and he was from, not from the U.S., We'll leave it at that. And uh, this is all about America on this channel, okay? And I love my Caterpillar engine and my Peterbilt. I like my Peterbilt. I like my Mustang. I like my motorcycle I have. You know, whatever else I have, you know. I mean, I do with what I got, okay? In time, I'll have, some, have me some better cameras and stuff. I got an awesome camera at home, but I don't want to take it on the road with me. That thing's too expensive. And, um, and that's for the wife to use. So... Let's get back into the video here. Um, I'm gonna fire it up, and we're gonna let you hear the hear that nice caterpillar sound. Brand spanking new, man. Brand spanking new. Sorry about the noise. I'm gonna let her build back up. Now this. Oh yeah. That sound good, right? Now it's for the sound of my people. Okay. Oh, dude, killer. So that's what we got. You know, sounds good going down the road too, guys. You know, um, I do a video going down the road, but that's a safety hazard. Uh, I don't do videos while driving. It's just me. That's my preference. And I don't really think if you're doing YouTube videos while you're driving, that isn't really mounted to the dash, and you're still touching the camera, that's still in the lines of not using hands-free. And you shouldn't be just using your cell phone while you're driving. I am sitting still as we speak, and I'm doing a video for you guys. So... That's that's just me because I see a lot of guys messing with phones on the on the road and messing with other devices while they're on the road and I've seen some other stuff on the road. But you truck drivers know what we're talking about. You know some of the stuff you see when you're on the road. You're like, I wonder if they know you can see that. So but yeah, I mean, I got a pretty good deal on it. I think because if I went to Petersburg, I was going to pay at least double. And, and I knew the the uh, manager a little bit. Well, my wife actually knew the manager a little bit there because he somehow we got a conversation, and then I mentioned my wife's name, and and then he said, "Yeah, I'm from such such." So, and you know, my my honey bun, and she was uh, she knew who he was, and you know, he he made sure this engine was well taken care of because they went to school together, which is cool. And a shout out to you, man. Thanks for the good job, and, and tell your guy at the shop, you did an excellent job. I, I'm very well impressed. But uh, slowly but surely, we're going to hear that. That's thunder and lightning, guys. Yeah. There's a storm out there. A brewing. And uh, I'm, uh, I just got out of it a little bit ago. I had to stop and get out of the truck for a minute. My back was hurting me. Oh, I'm getting old. But anyway... Yeah, that's what we've been doing here lately. I've been real busy and uh, trying to maintain the rig. 
and uh, I was home for a whole month. It did hurt me being home for a month, but honestly, I, in my own opinion, I think I needed the time off with my family, and I think my family needed me home too. You know, and I think once a year, or once every other year, I'm gonna take a month off and just enjoy it being with my family during the nicer months of the year. Sounds like a good plan. So, anyways, that's the new motor we got on the Pete. Uh, this is a 3406 E model cat. And uh, I got it. I, I like how well they did. It sounds great going down the road. This motor, before I even rebuilt it, never sounded like that ever. Uh, and here in about, uh, I'd say about two, maybe three weeks, I'll be going to the house again. And then um, I'm going to have them crank the motor up a little bit. He set it up to where I can do at least 500 plus if I want to. But with the old Super 10 transmission, you can only do 500 horse on that transmission. And that's what the the uh, specs and everything is for that, that, that transmission. And one day I will show a video. Um, I'll probably have somebody with me show you how to shift a Super 10. It's kind of like a 13 from what I've been told. Uh, it's just uh, a little bit different for you guys that don't know how to drive a Super 10. And uh, it's a little tricky if you don't know how to do it. It's kind of like shoot. It's trying. It's kind of like shooting at a. Uh, I mean, shifting in, in in a regular ten. Only difference is, you you you're still in the same gear when you shift to the next one. So basically, you got, let's say, four and five. You know, you got three and four, in the same thing. So you're you're going up. And there's three. Hit the switch. There's four. And then you hit switch again, there's five, hit switch again, there's six, and, and you're, you're double clutching whatever you got to do, you know, that you normally do, and uh, that's a simple way of knowing how to shift one, and um, I got big rear ends on this and everything, so this truck it, right now, it pulls like a beast, and it pulls like it did back in... 2011, um, when I drove, when, uh, well, let's see, let's see, 12, 2011 is when they, before they rebuilt it last, and, uh, I was around when it got rebuilt last. Now, here's a, here's a little thing. Uh, when I got, I, I took the truck in, because I knew something wasn't right. So, when I took the truck in, I thought I had a fuel issue. Because it was kind of just missing, it's sitting there going do 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 You know, it's kind of doing that. Just every time I get it in from like nine to ten, and when when I get her good and warm, and then I do a good hard pull. And once I did that good hard pull, and I see my temps being up a little bit, around two hundred or so, somewhere around there, and my pyro will be up about six hundred or so. The the engine was just sitting there, just and it eventually it would quit. And then I'm like, something's not right here. So before, I went to go get my new eyeglasses. And before I went out, I was like, I'm going to have my motor checked and everything. Excuse me. And I thought it was just maybe a fuel issue. Fuel pump was fine. Doing good and everything. I said, all right. And he, the, the guy that looked at it was from Cat. And he told me, he goes, now you hear that noise when I let off and everything? I said, yeah. He goes, your motor is not supposed to do that. And it sounded really raspy. And uh, he he suggested that I do an overhead to check everything. He goes, when's your last overhead? So I've not ever done overhead as long as I've had the truck. It's within about a year since I, I've had the truck. I haven't done one. I'm planning on doing one. He says, well, it's about 350 doing overhead. Okay, let's do an overhead, check everything out. Come back and, and there was some things that were over tight in the head. I'm like, okay, well that explains a little bit of stuff. And then um, everything was fine. I went home next morning I took off and I kept hearing something go going down the road. I was like, uh, this doesn't sound right. And it was in my lower RPMs. Well, long story short, um, I took it back. He looked over it again. 
and he couldn't hear it because he's done this for 40 some years and your hearing goes bad with most mechanics over time who's around these loud trucks all the time so they brought a kid over in his early 20s I'm taking it and he went over and he goes I hear it so he kind of showed them what they were listening for and then lo and behold with the oil dribbling off from the valve covers having them loose the oil dribbling and then someone says hey I found it and I had a head gasket it was cracked between the two cylinders so basically you got a cylinder here and a cylinder here and it was cracked dead center so on that aspect it was not getting my oil the water was not getting my oil oil wasn't getting into my water but the telltale sign is that he said well you're getting gases from your piston going through your radiator and then he goes, how I know is, he goes, you got a little bit of pressure on your on your, on your your overflow tube. So okay. He goes, that's not normal. He goes, but some trucks will do that. He goes, but I think you got something going on with your head. And it's before you even found the head gasket, okay? So I, at the time, I kept blowing hoses and stuff. I couldn't figure out why. Well, that's why. I was getting pressure from the piston going through the head, and then it was blowing throughout my antifreeze tube, and it was causing that to happen too. So that was a telltale sign that my head gasket was blown. Now not everybody's application is the same but mine at the time was it was a blown head gasket. So yeah I could have went ahead and fixed the head gasket and replaced it but what's to say after they got all that on I just wasted five six grand to do all that if not a little more and then here I am out five six grand because now it's got good compression it's probably been like that for about a year and never knew it and then turn back around, I blow the blow the motor. Okay, so uh, me and Honey Bun decided to say, okay, uh, what do you want to do? And I say, well, I think we should just rebuild it, be done with it, spend the extra money, you know, five, six, seven grand, and cover our tails in the long run. And I said, not only that, we get a four-year unlimited mileage warranty. We're covered for four years. And we don't have to worry about a motor if it blows up that we have to fork out another whatever to, to fix the motor. I said, this is a no-brainer deal. I said, let's go ahead and find a way to get the money scrounged up and get this thing care of. I mean, it's, it's a smart investment to carry us along for the next four years where we don't have to worry about it. And then uh, probably later this year, I'm going to have the transmission serviced and have it all checked out and everything uh, just to be at the par. The rear ends are fairly new on the truck. So pretty much I got a brand new truck underneath on the frame. And she's got about a million, million and a half miles on the, on the, the chassis and the body and everything. But it ain't a bad looking truck. So on that aspect, y'all have a safe day. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to do some trucking. Um, I had to stop for a few minutes because my back was hurting me. And I figured, well, I'll just do a quick YouTube video, you know. And um, remember to like and subscribe my videos and um, hit that notification button if you wish to choose to join uh, my YouTube channel. Um, I do post once in a while. I've been real busy with my business. I've been busy with family and all that. You know, I'm a pretty busy guy. That's why they call me Busy Bee. And I do a little bit of everything. We do anything and everything that screams America. Okay? So be safe out there. Don't text and drive. And uh, be safe out there, all right? Peace. Be safe. God bless. And enjoy that view of that hood today. Later.